All right, I'm back this time. I'm going to do the whole thing again, and I apologize. I don't know what the problem was with our microphone, but we've tested this approach and it works. So we're talking about puppies who jump and nip and mouth their people and are cause pain, and that's not fun for anybody. So um, the point of this whole thing is that we're going to bring out the best in the puppy by nurturing the right behavior using kindness and nothing else. So in case you haven't met me, I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel. I'm a veterinarian. I've been in practice for a long time. And in the last oh, 13 years or so, I've been practicing behavior medicine. I finished my residency training. And uh, this is largely about neurologic disorders in the brain that are manifest as behavior symptoms. But puppies who are, um, thank you, Ann. Everybody can hear me now. I appreciate that. Um, so. Uh, but puppies who do this are not abnormal. They're actually completely behaviorally healthy. And the reason that they're jumping and nipping and you know, perforating their people is that they are trying to play. And they don't have litter mates because you adopted this puppy and all you have is people. Well, um, you know, the problem with many people is that they just don't have any idea what to do. And I'd like to explain this with the story of a German short hair pointer named Fufu. Um, yeah, that really is his name. He's seven weeks old. And he is um, a very sweet puppy. But he was adopted by a couple in their 70s. Great people, pretty darn able bodied. But, you know, their skin was getting thin and they had a whole lot of dog in the seven week old puppy. He was wild and crazy. Well, he's a hunting breed and that's what happens and they had uh, really no idea what to do. And so like most people, they were um, reacting. And so he would jump and bite and, you know, they'd push him down and yell at him. And guess what, he got worse. And the reason is in many cases, the puppy believes that their person is actually playing with them. And if you get really stern, like some of these folks' friends had suggested, people who had watched reality TV or had, you know, hunted for information on the internet, um, and passed on the, the misguided belief that dogs are trying to push their people around, they're trying to dominate them. That's just not so. Um, this little guy was simply using his people for playmates, and that wasn't appropriate, but he didn't know any better. And so we went ahead and um, first thing I told him was, we're not gonna do anything to scare the puppy. Um, and so in, uh, we're going to have the puppy drag this leash around all the time. This happens to be a, a nice six foot leather training leash. And instead what we had them do was to get a, uh, go to the pet supply store and, um, um, and get a dog tie out cable. These are stainless steel cables that are vinyl coated that uh, have a clip on each end. They're intended to actually tie a dog outside, which is a really bad idea. You would just never do that. Um, but these things are pretty handy because they're vinyl coated, so if the puppy chews it, he's not going to hurt his teeth. And it's not much fun to chew anyway. And uh, you can use a wire cutter and cut the clip off one end so that you have this relatively stiff thing that the, the dog drags all over the house. And it's handy because as soon as the puppy gets that little glint in his eye, that um, you know, let's rumble kind of, kind of look about him. <laughs> you recognize that right away. And, you know, people have to train themselves. What you don't do is say anything to the puppy. You completely stay quiet and you ignore 100% of the 100 billion active neurons that we humans have in our brains. We don't let that dog's name be on even one of them. So you say bad behavior, step one, every time, completely ignore. Step two is step on the drag line, that, that leash or that tie-out cable the puppy's dragging around, so that you can grab it, turn on your heel, and march with purpose to a different place. And what you've accomplished is that you have derailed the puppy from the context, the situation. You have taken away something critically important to him, and that's your attention. And that's why you have to ignore completely. Dogs are highly social creatures who communicate among themselves almost continually. 
and they normally watch their people for behavioral cues. And if your dog or puppy can discern even the slightest hint of you're thinking about him somewhere in your brain, then you've just inadvertently reinforced the behavior. So again, the, the ignoring part is the most important step. It's what you do first. Then you step on the drag line, you pick it up, and you make tracks. And after you've taken several steps or maybe walked to another room, then you take a quick glance back at the totally ignored puppy who doesn't exist. And if you notice a softer body posture, like he's calmed himself just a little bit, well, we're going to reinforce that because that's what we want. But we're going to do it very quietly because if you get enthusiastic with a puppy whose arousal had ramped up way too high and now he's starting to ramp himself down a little bit, well, we don't want to get enthusiastic and set an example to ramp him right back up again in that context. We want him to stay calm a little bit. So when you reinforce, you say, foo foo, good boy, very, very quietly. Don't touch him. Low key reinforcement, okay? And then what you do next is you whip a toy out of your pocket because you always have one, okay? Chew toy like this, a rawhide, whatever he likes, okay? And you whip this out of your pocket and you pop it into his mouth and you can tell him he's good and you can play with him, have a little tug of war game and he can start to say, wow, I have lost out by doing something that these folks don't want me repeating, but as soon as I'm calmer, I earn their attention back right away and I get something to chew that is totally legitimate. Well, we're setting this guy up for success by not only having one in our pocket so you can pop it into our mouth, but you've left a handful of different toys around on the floor so that the puppy can learn with hundreds of repetitions that every time he tries to jump and mouth and nip, he immediately loses his, his, his relationship briefly. He gets uh, towed out of the situation with this leash, gets calmer and earns an interaction, and then an opportunity to chew on the thing that he should be chewing on. And if you have a handful of them on the floor, he always can find something to chew that he should be chewing that is not a part of human anatomy. Okay, so um, what we're going to do then is one more thing to set the little guy up for success, and that is that we're going to get him good and tired every day, or her, because, you know, one other problem with Fufu is that he lived with these older folks and his litter mates weren't with him. And what the heck was he supposed to do to burn off steam? Well, something that dogs are hardwired to do behaviorally is to forage. Yes, they are predators and they're hunters, but by and large, most of their survival comes from you know, finding dead stuff in the wilderness. What they don't encounter in their wild state, and believe me, they are genetically programmed to function that way, what they don't find is a bowl of dog food somewhere. They find stuff in a carcass that is a little hard to get the food out because maybe it's been picked over by a few dozen other dogs. And so you put food in a food dispensing toy or a puzzle. There's lots of them. And the best one for your dog is the one she likes the most. This one's called a twist and treat. I've shown this before in other Facebook Lives. You can put dry food in this. I prefer to use this particular one for canned. You can gap it apart just a little bit initially to make it easy for the dog to get the food out. But you notice this funky shape is a design that's intended to make it challenging for the dog to manipulate it and to extract the, to the, uh, the food. So after the dog's gotten the hang of this thing, after being using it a few times, and any other food toy that works for him, many are meant for dry food, but I like to use these for cans sometimes because you put the canned food in the two halves and then you screw it back together at whatever gap you find works best for your dog and then put it in a Ziploc and freeze it overnight so that when you take it out of the bag in the morning, manipulating this thing and working loose that canned dog food popsicle is challenging. Well, dogs who spend a significant amount of their day working to get their food out of food dispensing toys and puzzles, challenging ones, they get good and tired, as they naturally should. And the saying that a tired dog is a happy dog, well, it is because it's a dog who's not jumping all over its people, burning off a lot of steam that it really should have engaged in doing natural behaviors. And one other really natural behavior for, frankly, dogs of all ages, but especially for puppies like Fufu's age, is hanging out with other puppies. 
and they can, you know, molest each other and jump all over and bite and mouth and, you know, roll each other around and, well, that's what they're supposed to be doing. And so if your puppy can do that with other puppies, he's far less likely to do with the wrong creature, which is you, the leader, okay? And it is totally out of line. Uh, it's not na it's not healthy, normal behavior, but healthy, normal puppies engage in it because they need to do this stuff and they need to do it with somebody. And if your body is the only outlet for this, uh, you, without meaning to, the puppy's been set up to do the wrong thing. And so we're gonna keep him good and tired by working and foraging uh, for survival. And uh, we're going to correct him in a very uh, scientifically research-based way called differential reinforcement, where we take away our interactions and then reinforce calmer behavior and then showing what we want him to be doing instead of all that stuff, okay? So, I'm glad we have sound this time. And, and I, uh, if anybody has any questions, and I think there is anything else, I think most of us are pretty satisfied with this. But you know, if you think this thing through and you share this with your friends, and please do, because a lot of people have puppies that are doing this. In fact, you know, frankly, just about any puppy is going to do this. So if you have friends with puppies, by all means, share this with them. And if you or they have questions later, please send them to me on my Facebook page because I'm gonna post this video and anybody who uh, has additional questions and not just on puppies who jump and nip and mouth, but anything else. I don't care whether it's an adult dog or a, or a puppy or, you know, a grown up border collie girl dog like Miss America here. So, um, and finally, if you have, if you wanna to subscribe to my website, um, I want to uh, invite you to do that. You can go there to drjeffnickel.com, D-R-J-E-F-F-N-I-C-H-O-L, and you can subscribe for no charge. And that would uh, entitle you to every week getting uh, my weekly newspaper column and uh, my weekly blog, uh, my Facebook Lives. I do other videos as well. And when you do, you'll get it no charge, my pet first aid and CPR guide, which can be pretty handy. Um, and here's a person Corey is asking, and thank you, Corey and Nancy, for tuning in here. Your two-year-old puppy who gets excited whenever I start acknowledging him. Yeah, that's right, and uh, he's just a glutton for your attention, and that's normal. And so what I would encourage you to do is stay with the, the drag line, the leash that your, your dog drags around, and when you're going to interact, first thing I would do is number one, all interactions need to be on your terms because you are the leader. And that again is the hierarchical concept that is genetically programmed into the canine brain. So we're not gonna to try to teach them to speak human. We're going to give them canine leadership that they can recognize immediately. So the interactions on your terms, your dog's dragging the leash. And when you choose to interact, step on the leash and then squat down and invite your dog to you and give a simple command. You know, if it's sit and your dog doesn't really know how to sit, then say it once, don't ever repeat a command. Push his rump down and then give him a pet and tell him how sweet he is. And that's the end of the interaction. Now, if you wanna carry on and get really excited and enthusiastic, I suggest using toys. There's this belief out there that you should not pay, uh, play tug of war with dogs you absolutely should, unless you have one of those unusual dogs who has a problem called play-related aggression. It's not very common, but those dogs, when they get really highly excited and behaviorally aroused, actually can bite. Very uncommon. Most dogs, you can, uh, you can play real hard and heavy with a toy, and the dog will associate the toy with his biting and chewing and pulling, and not, again, your body. Okay, but the interactions should always be on your terms. And you know, it's a somewhat related discussion is attention seeking behavior. And, uh, and I'll do another Facebook Live on that because a lot of dogs are pesky. And without meaning to, people encourage that. But it actually is not only caused by anxiety in many dogs, it leads to more anxiety. Um, so for example, I have my dog Miss America here. Can you sit up and let people see you? Um, and uh, and so the, <laughs> there she is. So when she came up to sit in this chair with me, it was on my invitation. 
And, you know, we've had her a long time. And I've taught her that if she wants something, her job is to sit and watch and wait and hope that her leader will encourage her to do what she wants, give her what she wants, but she has to earn it first. And that totally plays into the canine brain and uh, reduces anxiety because it's a system they understand. So thank you again for tuning in on this second Facebook Live that you can now hear. I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel, and this is my excellent sidekick, Miss America. <laughs>